The many facets of our lack of equal protection under the law create a very grim picture. In a perfect world, women would control when and where we become involved in all situations that might lead to pregnancy. We'd have unrestricted access to the best methods of birth control, and birth control would be foolproof. In reality, according to the FBI, one in four women will be a victim of rape, attempted rape, sexual assault, intimate partner violence, or stalking in their lifetime. This includes all of us, from very young girls to older women. There is no age at which we are safe from this cultural hatred. In reality, anti-choice extremists are imposing their personal religion on us, seeking bans on choice and limiting free speech by preventing access to contraception and information and the ongoing threat of violence is very real. In the United States, a woman is five times more likely to die when their abusive partner has access to a gun. The reauthorization of the Violence Against Women Act was supposed to include a provision that would absolutely close the boyfriend loophole, preventing abusive partners from purchasing and possessing firearms. Republicans wouldn't pass that version of the act, and because, and only because of that, and then significant parts of the boyfriend loophole still exists. The politicians who block common sense gun safety laws are the same politicians who block safe access to reproductive health care. That's not a coincidence. Do not let politicians talk to you about the sanctity of life without telling you how they will address the leading cause of death for children, guns. And do not let them tell you that this, isn't, that this is a national issue. All five Republicans on Valparaiso City Council refuse to even talk about common sense gun safety initiatives that will protect our children. How's that for protecting life? True blood! And I'm gonna stop crying! Especially at an event like this, we're like, we're literally losing our rights tomorrow. My mom is crying about me. That's crazy. So, let me introduce myself. I am Hannah Trueblood. I am running to be the first woman uh, mayor of Valparaiso. In fact, I am the first female candidate to run in the general election for Valparaiso. This is not, you know, I was breaking the glass ceiling and I got a cut, so. I am a daughter. I am the mother of a daughter. I am 20 years deep in advocacy and activism for people of all kinds. And I am a proud member of NOW, which is the amazing people that have put this together. And I'm here to talk about the importance of electing feminists in every level of government. It is not just about the national politics we hear. There are differences that can be made here on a local level. Every issue that we face as a woman and have faced and are facing today and will continue to face for future generations, it is intersectional. Sexism, homophobia, transphobia, anti-choice people, racism, poverty, classism, all of these things are connected. Now I have always and always will stand up and fight for everyone's rights no matter who you are. Because if one of us loses, we all lose. And in a nutshell, that is why I am running to be your mayor of Valparaiso. And what does it even matter? You know, I, when I'm a mayor, I, I don't get to decide who gets to have an abortion or who gets to have access to a gun. But when I am your mayor, I will use my influence and my platform and my relationships to advocate for your rights. 
I will testify downstate. I will work with the city council to ban crisis pregnancy centers like the one just down the street. I will call our congressman, Frank Mervan. I will call Governor McCormick, who's running for governor, and she will be the first female governor of Indiana. And I'll say, hey, Valparaiso women are dying. We have to make a change today. I will advocate downstate, up and down, everywhere that I have to go to put the public ballot initiative on in Indiana so that we get to choose like Kansas got to choose. Like Laura was talking about earlier, the ERA is an incredibly important part of our history. And when that passes, because it will, we're putting it out into the universe right now, when that happens, that is going to nullify all of these dangerous, dangerous laws that have been passed. It is going to make it unconstitutional for them to take away our rights. And on a local level, representation matters for that very reason. And it only happens in, for, in three ways. First, you have to register to vote. Second, you have to go and vote. And third, you have to run for office. Yes! Voter turnout in 2022 is embarrassingly low in our state. We got, I mean, it was, it was bad. We lost almost every single election to people who are voting to take our rights away. State Representative Ed Soliday has a 0% rating by the ACLU of Indiana in regards to women's reproductive health care and rights. And he ran unopposed last year. That is unacceptable and we cannot let that continue. Senator Ed Charbonneau's term ends next year. He voted in favor of this abortion ban that we are here about. He also voted in favor of arming our teachers. He doesn't want to talk about common sense gun control, but he wants to give our teachers a gun. That's, that's what he thinks is logical. And he also thinks that he has a right to decide what we do with our bodies and what our children do with their bodies. And we are here to say no more. We have to vote them out. And the only way we can vote them out is if we have another option. You do not have to come from a multi-generational Silver Spoon family. You don't have to come with a background in business or law or anything. All you have to do is care about your people, care about your community, and be willing to step up to the plate and fight for people like I am today. <laughs>